There are a few to know good FPS boost videos for Fortnite on YouTube. So sit back, relax, and follow along as I help you drastically reduce your input and editing delay. Starting this video off, we want to make sure our Windows operating system is up to date. Updating your Windows won't have the biggest impact on performance Fortnite-wise, but it helps out a tiny little bit with FPS stability. And more than anything, updating your Windows is important because of security concerns. To update your Windows, simply press your Windows button and search for Windows Update Settings. And when you get into Windows Update, you might see Future Update to Windows 10, Version and whatever name. If you do, go down here and press Download and Install. Now your PC will update Windows and you will have to restart your PC once the update is finished. After you've restarted your PC, you're done with the first step of this video. Moving on, we want to go ahead and launch Fortnite. Once Fortnite is launched, we want to press Alt and Tab to tab out of the game and go down to our taskbar and right click on it and select Task Manager. Once Task Manager is opened, we want to head over to the Processes tab and find Fortnite. Right click it and select Open File Location. Once we're inside of this folder, we then want to once again right click on Fortnite, but this time on the Fortnite application. Go down to Properties, then press the Compatibility tab, and once we're in here, we want to ensure that Disable Full Screen Optimizations is checked. Then hit the Change High DPI Settings button, and then check off Override High DPI Scaling Behavior. Press OK, Apply, and then again, OK. The reason behind why doing this is so extremely important to reduce input lag and edit delay is because Windows actually tries optimizing full screen applications for you so that alt tabbing goes faster, making your full screen applications not entirely full screen exclusive. And this causes an extra tiny bit of delay when playing. When you put on this setting, you might encounter that alt tabbing takes slightly longer, but your in game FPS consistency and input delay will be much, much better. Moving on, we're gonna be talking about a few things you can do to make your GPU perform better. So most people start talking about the NVIDIA 3D control panel right about now, but this is honestly just a waste of time, as Fortnite just overrides these settings anyways. So what you instead want to go ahead and do is press the Windows button, search for Graphics Settings, and right here, you should find the option Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. If you for some reason don't find this setting, then you haven't followed step one in this video and updated your Windows. So go back to step one if you don't have this option available. Simply put this setting to on. This setting, for anyone wondering, simply allows the CPU to offload some of the work of rendering in graphics over to the GPU, allowing us to play a much smoother game. The next thing we can go ahead and do is clicking the Windows key yet again and searching for this PC. Then we want to right click on it and select properties. Once we're on this screen, we want to go over to the right hand side and click on advanced system settings. Then hit the settings button under the performance tab and put on adjust for best performance. On high-end PCs, this difference will nearly not be noticeable. However, on lower-end PCs, this alone can make everything way more smooth and responsive. Next up, I'm gonna talk about how to optimize the SSD your game is located on. What you wanna do is once again hit the Windows button and search for Defragment and then click the first app that pops up. Once you're in here, you quickly just want to hit optimize on your C drive and you can, if you want to, do the same to all of your other SSD and HDDs as well. But since I only use my C drive for everything work and play related and the HDD drives purely for storage, there's no need for me to optimize anything else than the C drive. Moving on, what we want to go ahead and do is once again press the Windows key and type in percent temp percent. Once you've opened this folder, you want to click Ctrl and A to select everything in it, and then right click and press Delete. For most of you, this won't really give any performance benefits, but if you've never done this with your PC before, you might have as much as 50 gigabytes of temporary files located in this folder, and cleaning up your hard drive is never a bad idea. Deleting temp files is completely safe, and you won't lose any important applications or notice any difference 
difference on your day to day. Discord is the next application we need to take a quick look at. So open Discord, go to the bottom left next to your mute and deafen button and hit the user settings option. Once you're in here, you must scroll down to game overlay and make sure that this is disabled. Having game overlay on makes a lot of people face massive FPS drops. So make sure that you have that checked off. Secondly, you want to head all the way down to advanced and make sure that hardware acceleration is checked off. This is absolutely essential as if you have it checked on, Discord will be taking GPU power and spending it on trying to make Discord run as smoothly as possible. Lastly, I'm going to be going over the absolute best in-game settings for smooth FPS and low input delay. So getting right into it, we want to begin by swapping from performance mode if we use that to DX11. This is only to make sure we can see all the settings Fortnite has to offer. Then when we're logged back in, we want to go into the settings again and start off from the top. Window mode needs to be on full screen for the best possible FPS and input delay. Your resolution can be whatever you like. However, for the best and smoothest FPS and input delay, stretched res is actually a worse option compared to the standard of 1920x1080. When it comes to your frame rate limit, you can use anything other than unlimited. Your PC is gonna work hard using 360 FPS as a cap, but some people prefer that as it feels smoother. I personally prefer using 240 FPS as I currently play on a 240Hz monitor. But as I mentioned, you're free to use any set setting you prefer other than unlimited. Your brightness, interface contrast, colorblind and strength have no impact on your FPS. Feel free to copy my settings if you want to, but keep in mind it's your monitor's settings that determine how your game looks to the greatest extent, not Fortnite. Your 3D resolution should be on 100% as it determines how well you see players. And your view distance should be put to medium. This is because you can see both builds and loot further away with medium compared to low. And it comes at a very low FPS cost. All the remaining settings should be put to low. Moving on down to the advanced settings is where you gotta pay attention. V-Sync and motion blur needs to be turned off. Show FPS doesn't affect your FPS and allow multi-threaded rendering must always be on. Crash debugging, latency markers, as well as latency flash are all only for troubleshooting and should all be turned off. Reflex low latency needs to be put on on plus boost and DLSS should be turned off. DLSS is for the players who want to experience Fortnite's ray tracing on high graphics and are not for competitive players. Moving on, we want to finalize the in-game settings by going over to the game UI tab. From top to bottom, you want to turn spectator counts off, reticle, player health, resources, minimap, quick bar and target info all on, pick up loot stream as well as map and backpack keys needs to be turned off, elimination feed should be on, but latency debug stats shouldn't, net debug stats however shows your ping and should be on, quest progress off, reticle ammo indicator off, control prompts off, and creative runtime stats off. In addition, I recommend using 70% as your HUD size. Once we're done with all of these settings, we gotta remember to turn performance mode back on and restart our game. Games. The last thing I want to mention in tonight's episode is enabling XMP. And if you don't do any other tip in today's episode, please do yourself the favor of enabling XMP. Because you can literally and honestly double your FPS by doing so. In the description of this video, I'll have a few links on how to enable XMP. Try finding the one suited for your motherboard brand, as that will make the process 10 times easier. Also, please keep in mind, not everyone has the option to turn on XMP. So if you can't find out how to enable it, then chances are you unfortunately don't have the option available. If you have any questions regarding anything related to this video, XMP or anything else, please let me know in the comments below. And other than that, please go on to have an amazing night. My name is Marion TM, stay safe and take care.